I wanted to make a video about my favorite books, or all the books I've read, I guess, in 2018, because it's now 2019, which is like weird and kind of scary, but like nothing I can do about it, you know? <sighs> Anyways, okay. So, I did not read much at all in 2018. It's kind of disappointing. That's part of why, if you have watched my New Year's resolution video, it's part of why I made a resolution to read at least one book a month this year in 2019. And hopefully I will surpass that, but honestly, if I read 12 books in a year, I'm like, mm, you know, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So, okay. I don't have all of the books I read with me, but I do have three of them right here. And I'm going to start off with the first book I read this year, which is um, the one I don't have with me. It is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. And that book was very odd to me because when I was reading it, I wasn't particularly enthralled with the story. Like, I was kind of like, eh, like, this is okay. And then I finished it, and I always find myself thinking about that book. Like, all of the time, I'm like, man, I want to read The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. Which is really weird for me because for the most part, when I read, I either, like, know I love something, or I'm like, uh, I don't really like this. The only other book I have read that has had a similar sort of impact, I guess, on me is Less Than Zero by Brett Easton Ellis, I believe. Um, that's the title and the name of the author. Um, when I read it, I hated that book. I thought it was the most boring book in the universe. I was like, oh my god, and I'm not the type of person who can just like stop reading something when I start. You know, I need to finish it, I feel like I need to give it its due. But I hated reading it so, so much. And then I finished it and I was like, god, thank god that's over. And then, a couple months later, I was like, I want to read that book again. Which I don't understand, that's really weird. But, yeah. So Sylvia Plath, The Bell Jar. I can definitely see why it's a classic, and I think maybe I will reread it again soon. Next for me is Simon vs. the Homo Sapien Agenda by Becky Albertalli. Um, if you don't know, the back of this book says, 16-year-old and not-so-openly gay Simon Spear prefers to save his drama for the school musical. But when an email falls into the wrong hands, his secret is at risk of being thrust into the spotlight. Now Simon is actually being blackmailed. If he doesn't play wingman for the class clown Martin, his sexual identity will become everyone's business. Worse, the privacy of Blue, the pen name of the boy he's been emailing with, will be jeopardized. As his email correspondence with Blue grows more flirtatious every day, Simon's junior year has suddenly gotten all kinds of complicated. Simon has to find a way to step out of his <laughs> Simon has to find a way to step out of his comfort zone before he's pushed out without alienating his friends, compromising himself, or fumbling a shot at happiness with the most confusing, adorable guy he's ever met. This book made me cry. I read this book. I devoured this book to be quite honest. I devoured this book and I finished it. And I was like, oh my god, that was amazing! And then like five minutes later, not even, I just sobbed. Just like, I full on like ugly cried on my couch. Just crying. I was like, that was so good! I don't know, this book is really great. And funny enough, I bought it and read it because the movie was coming out and I still haven't seen the movie. I'm planning on watching that today, actually. So maybe the end of this year. That'll be in my favorite movies. Who knows? But yes, Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. Please read it for the love of God. It's so good. Especially if you are, like, gay in any way. Read that book. Read the book. It's so amazing. Read the book. If you're straight, though, read it too. Because, um, you kind of need to. 
but it's amazing. Read the book. After that, um, I reread this year. I've actually owned this book for like two or three years now. Um, this is Crush, ooh, 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 ooh. Crush by Richard Sykin. This is a book of poetry by the author Richard Sykin, obviously. And this is, he is my favorite author without a doubt. Like nobody compares to Richard Sykin to me. His work is beautiful and harrowing and amazing. And there's no other way to explain it than just one night, read it to yourself. It, read it in the daytime after you've read this book for the first time at night, if that makes sense. The back of this book says, Richard Sykin's Crush is the winner of the 2004 Yale Series of Younger Poets competition. It is a powerful new collection of poems driven by panic and obsession. As the distinguished poet and competition judge Louis Gluck writes in the foreword, if panic is his ground note, Sykin's obsessive focus is a tyrant, the body. His title, Crush, suggests as much. In the dictionary, among the words many meanings, to press between opposing bodies so as to break or injure, to oppress, to break, pound, or grind, or, as a noun, extreme pressure. Out of this cauldron of destruction, its informal meaning, infatuation, the sweet fixation of girl on boy, and psychin, boy on boy. The risk of obsessive material is that it may get boring, repetitious, predictable, shrill, and the triumph of Crush is that it writhes and blazes while at the same time holding the reader utterly sustaining interest seems far too mild a term for this effect. What holds is sheer art, despite the apparent abandon. I love Richard Sykin absolutely so much, and I don't know, it's hard for me to talk about because actually like, I hold him so dear in my heart that I don't like sharing with other people. I don't know. Is is that like only child syndrome like popping out right there? Um, yeah. But read Richard Sykin's Crush. You can because it's amazing. The next book that I finished in 2018 was Beautiful Boy by David Sheff. And I read this because the movie is coming out. I saw the trailer for the movie. I was like, wow, that looks amazing. I'm going to read the book. And then I found out the movie's not coming out until 2019. And so I, like, devoured this book. I mean, right, rightfully so. Like, this book is amazing. But I devoured this book and then just kind of, like, had to sit with it for a while. And it was uncomfortable because I really wanted to watch the movie. But, um... This book is a true story from a father retelling how his son's drug addiction and alcoholism affected his family and um the back of this book says what had happened to my beautiful boy to our family what did i do wrong these are the wrenching questions that haunted david chef's journey through his son's nick addiction to drugs and tentative step steps towards recovery before Nick became addicted to crystal meth, he was a charming boy, joyous and funny, a varsity athlete, an honor, stu honor student adored by his two younger siblings. After meth, he was a trembling wraith who lied, stole, and lived on the streets. David Chef traces the first warning signs. The denial of the 3am phone calls. Is it Nick? The police? The hospital? His preoccupation with Nick became an addiction in itself. But as a journalist, he instinctu instinctively researched every treatment that might save his son, and he refused to give up on Nick. This book made me cry like three different times reading it because it's filled with so much just like raw emotion. And I don't know, like this, even if you have never struggled with addiction or your family never has like this is just such a wonderful book to just read and like I don't know just just read this book just read this book it's really good and you won't regret it just read this book the next book that I started and did not finish in 2018 is Stephen King's it this is a really busted up copy from my grandma um, I started this 
on the bus around Halloween time. And then my backpack is already like 30 pounds. Like my backpack is super heavy. And I, after a while, I was like, you know what? This book is huge and really heavy and I'm not into carrying it around everywhere. And so I took it out of my bag and then kind of just stopped reading it. But I think that will be my October book of the month this year because it's very fitting. <sighs> and then to wrap everything up, um, my book of January 2019 is The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. It is being made into a movie and that's not why I bought this book. I bought this book off of a friend's recommendation and I've had it for like maybe a year by now but nonetheless a really long time and I haven't read it so I made it my January book of the month and in the back it says Theo Decker a 13 year old New Yorker miraculously survives an accident that kills his mother abandoned by his father Theo is taken in by the family of a wealthy friend Bewildered by his strange new life and tormented by his longing for his mother, he clings to the one thing that reminds him of her, her, a small, mysteriously captivating painting that ultimately propels Theo into the art underworld. As an adult, Theo moves silkily between the drawing rooms of the rich and the dusty labyrinth of the antique store where he works. He is alienated and in love and at the center of a narrowing, dangerous circle. The Goldfinch is a beautiful stay up all night and tell your friends triumph about an old-fashioned story of loss and obsession, survival and self-invention, and the ruthless machinations of fate, machinations? I don't know, of fate. And that is my books of 2018. Hopefully 2019's be a bit better, but I think it wasn't too bad for 2018, you know? Um, if you have any favorite books, that you read in 2018, share them with me. Maybe they will be my favorite books of 2019, you know? Cool, okay. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you later.